Part three of the mini series is here upon us right now. Great interview that we're going to have to learn about the business side of esports with one of our guests who has over 10 years of experience in the gaming world. So we're going to learn about that. Thanks again to our sponsor, Idaho Gaming League. It's uh, it's the home of Idaho Esports, and it's an amazing group that we're going to learn about, actually, when we meet the sponsor in part four. But make sure to go and check out IdahoGamingLeague.com and follow them on all of their social media channels. For our part three, however, we're bringing on a businessman himself, David DeVries. David, thanks so much for taking the time to join us and educate us on the uh, Esports miniseries. Absolutely, Shane. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure, man. And to get to know you a little bit better, David, could you please explain your background? So where you're from and what's your background and experience in the world of esports? No doubt. So I am actually from Washington State. I just moved to Boise about six months ago, and it is with a friend from college, and we met uh, over at Washington State University, and we were looking to uh, start an esports apparel uh, apparel brand, a clothing brand, sorry. So we uh, moved out here to Boise. And that's where our manufacturer was, that's where our investor was, and that's how we kind of ended up in Boise. But um, before we met in college, I had been heavy in the competitive gaming scene uh, my entire life, pretty much spent about, I'd say, close to 10 years old. Um, I started playing uh, on Xbox Live. Halo 2 was the main game, and uh, got very serious and put in a lot of time and, and practice on that game. So that, that carried me to where I'm at now, for sure. And that's funny because that word, Halo, that game, that name, it uh, rings with me. Like I said before, it's a game that my friends used to play religiously, and I was terrible at it, so I was always the one that like stuck out because I was never very good at it, so it was never fun for me. Same thing with Fortnite. I've never been able to grasp that game, but my friends that played Halo all play Fortnite, and they're all really good at it, so that game's really popular. Halo was kind of like the starting point, I think, for everybody in those games. And David, you mentioned that, you know, before college you were into to these games and, and competing and such, but how many years would you say overall you have an experience with the gaming world? Hmm, I'd say I've been following it and um, been involved with it pretty heavy for, I'd say, close to about 12 years. Okay, okay, 12 years, that's a long time. So in those 12 years... David, what are some of the changes in, in such that you've seen in the esports world? Yeah, that's a great question. So since day one, I mean, we uh, it's been the craziest thing is just the number of people uh, involved with it all now. I mean, we when we were back in those Halo Two days, it was uh, it was a tight knit group of friends and I that, that would play together, like you said, kind of religiously. <laughs> Same with your other friends, I'm sure. But it was uh, yeah, just this, the scale of of the community has been probably the most uh, surprising thing. I wouldn't say it shouldn't say surprising has been the most shocking thing to me because it has grown exponentially. Um, just the feedback, the, the forums online, uh, we used to go to MLG.com and you know, there'd be a, which was the popular kind of major league gaming, uh, what that back in the day. And there was always, you know, solid, solid feedback and interactions between the users, but now you have, websites and, and forums today and, and reddit pages that are just hundreds of thousands of people strong and to see that is, has been amazing to see that growth has been amazing. for sure and some of that growth i can talk about because it's it's helped me like I, i've opened my eyes a lot because back in the day i was just all into tra- traditional sports up until now i was all into tra- traditional sports until i started connecting with people like yourself and i learned more about the gaming world i used to make fun of one of my best friends he was a Great basketball player, best basketball player on our team, one of the top point guards in the state of Idaho. Um, huge basketball player, but also an avid gamer, and he still loves gaming. And I used to make fun of him for the gaming side. But one of the things that intrigues me and has really helped me in my growth and knowledge is just the the overall competitive side of sports. And I know we talked about this before we started recording, but I want your thoughts on the competitive nature of gaming. Yeah, so I too had a, a pretty heavy sports upbringing. Uh, it was the I was the youngest of, of seven, so I came from a large family. Every one of my older siblings was heavy into sports, so I had no other option. I was heavy into sports, basketball, football, soccer, all of that, all the way up through high school. Um, but during that time, I found out about Halo 2 somewhere along the lines, and I had an older brother who was very uh, impressed. He had a huge impact on my life because he actually would invite me and I have a twin brother. He'd invite us out to his university, which was close to where we lived, and we would go play on the weekends Halo 2 tournaments against college people. We were in middle school. So, I mean, that had a 
profound impact on our kind of on our lives because that was that opened up the, the serious competitive side. And it was, man, I mean, it was addicting. It was it was awesome. It was it was everything in basketball that that I loved. It was the teamwork. It was the you know kind of ten hands working as one to score a bucket. But on Halo Two, there was me and three other teammates, and we had to work together and and run the right strategy and communicate effectively and and work together to beat the other team. And it was it was kind of those little nuances that I started picking up on and, and really started liking more for some reason in the in the video game side of things. I don't know if it's if it's the less physical side of things and I could focus more on my gameplay or I'm not sure what it was, but it was something about the, the online aspect and the, the controlling my player versus someone else in real life who was controlling their player and then we duke it out and it was kinda we we were on this you know this this digital battleground that we could test each other's skills. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I find very funny is the fact that sometimes gaming can bring out more competition in the the more evil side, quote unquote, of people than traditional sports. Like I'm guilty of it myself with Madden and NBA 2K. Those are the those are the games that I play. And I've said some things that I would probably not say on a on a normal you know football field or a basketball court or whatever. Um, I mean, it gets it gets heated. And I know a guy who said that his kids aren't allowed to play Fortnite anymore because it's Satan's game, is what he said. Because uh, just because of what happens, um, the competitive nature behind the games. I want to know your thoughts here, David. When you mentioned you know you grew up heavily with traditional sports and where you were heavily involved. Did you ever find that the esports experience and the esports knowledge that you had ever translated to the traditional sports for you? Uh, yes and no. I, I mean, no in the sense that it's not as nearly, obviously, it's incomparable in, in a physical nature. Um, when you get down to the really fine, particular, like, muscle movements and muscle memory, yes, there's lots of that with the controller, and especially if you're playing on a mouse and keyboard, there's... In, I mean, incredible amounts of dexterity required to operate at the highest level. Like, we see these pros play and these Fortnite pros play. I mean, it's, it's incredible. But, I mean, obviously, you're sitting down. So, it's, there's only so much that can transfer. But the biggest thing was the, the teamwork aspect and the, the team side of things and working together and kind of putting aside your differences. And, I mean, you have to work together. Someone can't have all the ideas. You know, you have, it has to be a healthy relationship in order to achieve the success that we all want to achieve definitely i like the teamwork aspect of it all and i do think the same as you like it some stuff can translate and the other stuff obviously can't like the physical you know requirements it takes to compete in a traditional sport compared to esports is a little bit different uh, but there's also like mental benefits that you can get from esports the mind muscle connection stuff like that that i think can translate directly over to those traditional sports and it's funny because a lot of these traditional sports markets a lot of organizations like professional sporting teams they're starting to get into the investing and, and sponsoring of esports leagues and teams and i want to get into the discussion of the business side now you in, you you introduced yourself explaining that you were part of an apparel company and i want you to expand upon that and explain what this apparel company is and uh, what you guys are setting out to do absolutely so uh, i got to college and was I was actually working with the Washington State uh, men's basketball team. I wasn't playing. I was just I was working. I was an equipment manager for the team, and that's where I met um, my business partner, who I'm with here today in Boise. And we hit it off because we were uh, we were on the bus one day and just talking video games and whatnot. One thing led to another, and we realized we were big Halo players back in the day. So he came over one day and we started playing Halo, and we kind of hit it off. And we've been playing uh, online and, and video games and whatnot. And then that was a couple of years ago. Um, we started, you know, play and was exciting because again, both of us had been in the industry pretty much for the majority of our lives, and we were realizing that there wasn't a kind of a universal or unifying brand that that gamers could could resonate with. Um, you have, I mean, there's a host of different them for athletics. Obviously, you have Nike and Adidas, and, and all these uh, different brands that represented athletes or a certain sport or or whatnot, and there wasn't really anything like that for gaming. So we were seeing where the industry was going and, and what we thought it was going to go, and we figured it might be an opportunity to uh, to kind of bring gamers together and, and give people uh, that play games a brand that, that can kind of bring everyone together. So, I mean, the people that are 40 years old and they're lawyers and they go home and, and play, you know, an hour of Call of Duty late at night or the teacher 
and all these people that you wouldn't really know are gamers, but when you get them on some free time and they go home and you wouldn't think it, but people, so many people play video games and we kind of wanted to bring a, uh, a brand that could, that people could represent and, and know that they were gamers. I mean, I think it's simply put, it's pure genius. I mean, you are reaching a market that hasn't been tapped into yet. And I, I mean, it's the first that I've heard of it and that's awesome what you got going on. So the name is good game apparel, correct? Yeah, Good Game Apparel. It's at, uh, you can find the, the URL is goodgameinc.com. Uh, you can find our website and all that. But yeah, uh, Good Game GG is a very common term. Uh, again, we've been in the gaming industry our whole lives. GG is a, it's kind of your signature at the end of the game. It's the most common language. If you're a gamer, you kind of know that GG types in on the keyboard or the message board or anything. People say it over the voice comms. It just means good game. Like, and that's it. Simple as that. It's a good game. It's a nice gesture at the end of every game. Although not everyone uh, uses such nice terms, but you know that is the, that is the preferred uh, preferred method people use. For sure. No, and I'm guilty of it too. Though I I have said much worse than good game. I love what you guys got going on, though. I love the idea behind it as well. And for the marketing side of things, are you guys sponsoring anyone? Are you selling products? Like, what exactly are you doing for the marketing side of the business? Absolutely. It's a really good question. We um, we are open and ready to pivot kind of wherever we get the best feedback from. But our main goal right now is is contacting streamers. So people on Twitch.com, on YouTube.com, uh, there's a bunch of different streaming sites that you have these well-known streamers who for a living stream. I mean, you, you mentioned some of them uh, in your previous podcast I've heard. So you find these kind of these brand ambassadors, these people that are playing in front of, you know, anywhere from 100 people a day or they're playing in front of 1,000 or, you know, 50,000. And we're kind of trying to find our, our niche in the streaming market. Also, we're obviously helping out with the um, the, the IGL, the Idaho League. So we're going to be sponsoring uh, that tournament we have coming up. So we're kind of poking around and seeing uh, between tournaments and streamers and leagues, maybe upcoming leagues and all that. So we're just kind of seeing where uh, – where it has, where it takes us. I love it, man. And are you guys global right now, or are you simply shipping domestically for the time being? Yeah, we ship uh, within the, the country and international. We have free shipping for everyone in the country, so that's a perk. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's national right now, but we do plan on, uh, we've had one international purchase, but, you know, plenty of room for growth. Again, we're pretty new. We're not even, we're close to, or a little past six months. Uh, in operations. We're very new, just kind of getting our foot in the door and, and seeing where things take us. Awesome, man. Well, I expect the demand to continue to rise as things continue to blow up in this industry in a good way. And that's going to be a good problem to have. And it's weird because I think you guys have the potential for international expansion because of the fact that esports is already so big overseas. The U.S. is trying to catch up, I would think. I mean, you are, I think you're absolutely right, man. I mean, if there's kind of crazy to think that there's no doubt that the, right now the, the the world sport is is soccer or as Tom you know, referred to as football everywhere but America but if there's a market that can pass soccer and is more uh, common to the regular person it's, it's esports and we're seeing it I mean it just passed television as the largest medium of entertainment in the world so I mean it's like you've been saying the numbers are just astronomical video gaming is is it's been incredible to see where it's, it's going and to think about where it's headed is uh, is very exciting. Absolutely. I think it's an awesome business venture, what you got going on. Uh, I think it's got major potential moving forward, so I'm excited for you. In regards to the actual merchandise we can purchase right now, for all the listeners out there, what can we purchase? Because sometimes you know, we'll start with shirts, and then you, know, you move on to other things, but what merchandise do we have available for us right now? You nailed it. Uh, T-shirts. Uh, right now, long sleeve t-shirts, sweatshirts, and then we plan on adding uh, like some joggers. We plan on adding hats. We plan on we are looking into and because uh, obviously gaming is pretty limited with what apparel is required to wear. I and mean, most people play and you can play in anything. But as the competitive scene grows, uh, we think that perhaps gaming gloves could become a thing that um, is is out. There. I mean, there already is a, a, a gaming glove company out right now and they do sponsor a few teams but um stuff like that nature i mean it's tough to tell what's going to come to surface when it's kind of a, a growing industry so it's tough we're kind of 
we're definitely watching it really close and seeing what um, what will come to the surface and what will be what the, a, a need will be from the gaming gaming world. So we're we're paying it to it for sure. I love it, man. And if you guys are interested in this, uh, the Good Game Apparel, you want a shirt or you have somebody that wants a shirt, goodgameinc.com is where you can get it. Make sure, you know, it's a great gift if you want to give it to somebody, one of your friends that's a gamer or you yourself want to represent. So goodgameinc.com, I'll put it here in the description as well. I want to know your thoughts, David, on the next 10 to 12 years of esports and where you think it's going to go because we've talked about you know you've been in the industry for roughly 12 years as an estimate and we've talked about the growth that we've seen and even the growth in you is from the competitive side and now into the business side but where do you think it's going to go in the next 12 years yeah that's a good question um the growth has been pretty steady over the years and obviously these last few years as it's become more mainstream it's it's picked up but like you said the in the united states we are it sure does seem we are behind a little bit when it comes to being socially acceptable. I mean, you, there's been a lot of pushback when you show esports on ESPN and all that. And there's the, the whole side of the argument that esports isn't a sport. And I totally get that. Um, but it's, it's when you, I, I mean, I don't see much difference between, you, you know, NASCAR and golf and all that. Yes, it is much more physical, those two. But when you really get down to the fine nuance thing, again, like the dexterity and, and hand-eye coordination requires – um, I think that people will start coming around to it. So I do think we'll see more of it. And I, I think once once America gets behind it, I think that will really, really speed things up. So I think there's plenty of more room for growth. I mean, America is, is second in the game market behind China uh, by about, I think it was like $8 billion or something. So, and China is obviously much larger than we are. So there's, there's, there's room for growth um, in the next 12 years. Man, I would be surprised. It's got to plateau at some point, but I, I think we're just kind of getting into the swing of things. It sure does feel that way. Um, the people I've talked to feel, I mean, it's, it's really, uh, I've struggled with gauging how far it can really go. I, in my eyes, this is what I, I think of. If you take a 20-ounce bottle and you empty it, but you pour a little bit of water into it and you fill it up about a quarter of the way, I think that's how much we've tapped into the esports market i think we've still got another three quarters before we have to put the bottle cap on that's how much growth we have in this industry it's just starting to to get rolling here absolutely and then when you cycle in i mean there's unforeseen things on the that could be that could float to the surface like virtual reality could become solid i mean it's kind it's got some ways to go but if i mean people if if that really takes off and becomes something that is easily accessible and masses the masses can use it for a relatively cheap price i mean who knows i mean that could be that could be shifting into sixth gear for the gaming market who knows the the virtual reality is kind of a huge question mark right now for sure i think virtual reality has a lot of potential it's just breaching the surface if they do it right it has major major potential Um, one of the questions that i have for you is in regards to these opportunities that esports are providing these kids these days so what i mean by that is it's no longer you know such a frowned upon thing to have a kid who's into gaming now these universities we just spoke to alex rogers on part two uh head coach of a collegiate esports team it's providing these kids with opportunities for college and such so the parents aren't necessarily looking down on their kids and saying you know you're you need to do something productive with your life because now gaming is considered productive in some some aspects because they can get a scholarship and get an education and in some cases earn a lot of money uh, gaming for their career so what's your overall thoughts on this one david uh in regards to these opportunities that you know gaming's presenting to these kids these days man it's it's something I kind of look back and regret now because I used to have obviously a lot of resistance from my parents uh, playing too many video games and there wasn't the career potential like there is now. And I mean, you, I've been hearing old professionals say that for years now. They're like, man, if only I was playing in today's market, they could have, you know, their life could have been completely, completely drastically different. But yeah, I mean, there's over 80 universities right now in the United States that offer scholarship gaming positions. Um, the University of Akron is kind of the, the one, from my understanding, that's kind of leading the charge. They have the most scholarships. They have the nicest facilities, and they've really embraced it. And they've, from what I've heard, they have a lot of good feedback from it. And they're, it's since it's so new, it's really interesting to see how it's going to work. Because you have University of Akron playing against 
you know, like small D3 schools, but they're kind of on an even playing field right now just because of how new the whole market is. But in terms of career opportunities for, for gaming, I mean, it's, there's a host of different ways and avenues you could, you could, uh, make a living out there now. I mean, these streamers are making anywhere from, you know, the top schools are making, you know, close to a million dollars a month. And that's not an, not an exaggeration. I mean, Fortnite made $300 million in a month a couple months ago. I mean, it's, these numbers are absolutely insane. And to think that they're not going to continue, uh, I think would be kind of foolish. Man, the numbers are insane. I mean, if Fortnite's making three hundred million in a month when it's a free game, it, it's free to play. That's just unreal, and it just shows you the potential and just how this industry is just completely blowing up. David, for you, someone who's been in the the competitive side as well as the business side, where do you see yourself going in the next few years? Do you want to stay on both sides and be able to, you know, compete as well as you know run the business, or do you see you taking one side over the other? Man, that's a really, really good question, and. I feel like I might be kind of greedy saying I want to do both, but man, I sure would love to, uh, I would love to, my main objective is to, is to stay with my business and to, uh, pursue that side. But at the same time, man, I'm still finding, uh, still finding some free time to, to put in some practice hours and I still feel like I can play at a high level and it's always been a goal and a kind of a bucket list, uh, of mine to play in some sort of competitive and e-sport tournament. So I would love to, get involved and play and, and get a swing out there and to see how I stack up against the local skill or the local talent and, and even worldwide talent for that matter. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. My main goal is to definitely st- stick with this business side of things, but the playing side and the, the competition side, I absolutely have a passion for. Do you think you're going to jump in on one of these Idaho Gaming League tournaments coming up? Whew, I would love to. I'd love to. I'm giving it some thought. We're going to talk over some things on our end, but depends if I'm available. You know, we might need some help running some things and whatnot, but I would absolutely love to. I would too. I think I might jump in on one of the Madden tournaments, to be honest with you. And I said that I was done asking questions. I lied. I actually have another question because I just brought up a Madden tournament. Obviously, this is relevant because it just was recent news, but there was a shooting at a Madden tournament in Jacksonville, Florida just recently. And, you know, it's a very unfortunate situation, very unfortunate. Um, But to me, I think it was also just a matter of time. And a lot of that has to do with the growth of this industry. There's, you're getting a lot of people into one area. Um, sometimes there's money on the line that you have to pay to play, or there's money that you could win. There's just prizes on the line. And there's also that competitive side. So you're getting a lot of people in one area competing with something on the line. And sometimes that brings out the worst in people. And it scares a lot of people. A lot of people were saying in the media, oh, well, the esports world has changed forever because of this. And um, I want to know what you think needs to be done in, in order to make these events more secure and make it more of you know something that where people feel like they can go and have a good time still. How do you think they can make that change to continue with this growth in the esports world? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Yeah, definitely shook up uh, shook up our world when that when we heard of that. But like you said, I mean, kind of only a matter of time. Unfortunately, with just kind of the how society has been acting here in this country within the last few years, with increased violence in random public sec- sectors and whatnot, it was kind of one would think it was only a matter of time before it entered the esports arena, especially with how much it's growing. Like you said, um, my biggest my biggest, biggest thing is obviously you have to hold safety at the top of the list. I mean, you have to do whatever you can to make sure everyone at your tournament is going to be safe through and throughout the entire thing. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to sacrifice, you know, the whole experience and having fun and make it seem like this is some big, like, militarized uh, gaming thing. You kind of have to find that balance of of safety and still having the fun gaming experience because that's what i mean at the end of the day everyone's getting together to play a video game and to have fun doing it um and i think if you lose sight of that you kind of uh, i think it could be detrimental to the whole the whole entire system so it's definitely not an easy question uh and we don't have all the answers right now it's something we're looking into and set the set the, the top of our list for chief concerns going into these any sort of tournament or event um you have to be careful with that stuff and I mean, if it requires extra uh, police force or even just having a security guard or 
or anything like that, I think would help, especially right now, what kind of maybe people are justifiably concerned following the Jacksonville event. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if that answered you all the way, but man, it's a, it's a tough question. It is a tough question, and I appreciate your answer because I don't think there's a full solution yet, but I think that as long as we're making steps in the right direction and making progress, that's what matters because then we can make it so these events are safe and secure and this community continues to grow. My last question for you, David, I mean, if you could go back in time, knowing what you know now and maybe talk to the 8 to 10-year-old version of yourself, the the gamer in you, like the, these kids sometimes feel like they're out of place, the ones that love to game, but now with all these opportunities and, and such that are arising for, for the gamers, what advice would you give to somebody that loves video games um, but and wants to you know have a future doing this? What advice would you provide them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm glad you asked it because... A disclaimer before I answer that, I mean, with, you know, just like every other field, kind of moderation and everything. I mean, there's there's definitely a, a negative. There's there's such thing as too much video games. You know, it can be detrimental to people's health. You can become addicted. And just like any other, you know, hobby, it, you can kind of consume your life if you allow it to happen. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, thankfully, I was very active. I was still getting plenty of exercise. I was outdoors all the time but still being able to uh, to play video games for, you know, a decent amount of time. But, you know, and it, there's really no shortcuts to to becoming good at, at anything. So you have to put in time, but you have to balance it so it's not easy. If, if you're looking to pursue a collegiate career or, or maybe a scholarship, which is something that's, uh, I think, very attainable and is only can becoming more accessible as we get as we get into this esports um, boom. But it is... I would I would look at Twitch streamers and and watch you have to watch the people you want to become so you have to see you know find the people you can find rosters right now on ESPN.com who's on which esports team at which university you can find them see if they have a Twitch handle you can watch them live see how good they are see what they do see, ask them questions you can email them you know there's a lot of different ways to get information and kind of see where you want to choose your path because you know there's a lot of different paths right now there's a lot of different genres that are that are going to be esport targeted. There's art, there's role playing games, you know. Then there's 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 first person shooter games. So you have to kind of decipher where you think your best skill set is at, what you enjoy the most, because you have to enjoy what you're doing, you know, just like everything else. Um, yeah, so, I mean, just kind of do some research and then and then set out on a path and and know that there's no shortcuts to, to becoming to becoming great because you have to be you have to be great to earn a scholarship. There's no doubt to, to compete at those high levels. You have to be very, very good. No, for sure. I think at any any level with whatever you're doing, if you're going to compete at a high level, you've got to be really good. And I think what's cool, what I've learned from networking with you guys that are in this industry and you're kind of like right in the middle of it all is the fact that there are resources available for these kids. If they want to succeed in esports and gaming, they have the resources and the tools necessary. Those live streams, they can watch them live. They can interact with them live and get advice from these guys. And a lot of those gamers are willing to, you know, talk with their audience and interact with their audience and all their followers. And that's, I mean, because that's basically what's paying them. So it is very interactive and accessible these days, which is amazing. I mean, it's completely changed my mindset on the world of gaming. I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm like this huge gamer now, but I have a much larger respect for the entire gaming industry and the gaming world no doubt man well it's, it's, i'm happy to hear that you've, you've come around to it man i i if people i feel like if you just give it a chance man it really opens your eyes and, and you start to see the little nuances and in, in the what really kind of makes makes it stand out separate from these other sports and it's something new it's something different it's not plagued by the all all the other you know uh social norms and stuff that go around football and basketball. There's no head injuries. You're not risking much of an injury. There's, there's the, the nationality side of it. You're not playing that, whereas the NBA is strictly, you know, an American league. The National Football League is strictly American, whereas gaming and esports is a global community, and that is pretty powerful. Absolutely. And David, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and share your knowledge with us on this esports mini series. I greatly appreciate it, man. I think the listeners definitely learned a lot of information today. And thanks for having me on, Shane. It was a blast. Definitely. And for everybody out there, make sure you tune in to part four as we finish up this esports mini series here on the Game Time Guru. <laughs>